welcome back this is sachin bhardwaj from team decipher and i'm here again presenting you the economic survey volume 2 and in this volume we are taking up chapter 1 and this is the second part of that chapter the chapter name state of economy and overview the next topic in this chapter is the share of public sector in gva that is gross value added but before going into this and its details let's understand the few basics um the first which will prove useful to understand the topic afterwards the relationship between gross value added that is gva and gross domestic product that is gdp it the gva this is the measure of the value of goods and services produced in an area in an or an in an industry or sector of an economy i'm repeating it again gva is the measure of value of goods and services produced in an area or industry so this gva measures the contribution or to the economy of each individual producer or individual industry or for that matter an individual sector in other words gross value added is defined as the value of output minus the value of intermediate consumption that is the material which was used for making the final product value added here represent the contribution of labor and capital to the production process when the value of taxes on products that means is me se jab hum subsidies ko minus kar denge so the value of taxes when it is added then the sum of value added for all resident units gives you the value of gross domestic product thus gdp of any nation that represents the sum total of gross value added that means without discounting for capital consumption or you call it in other language without accounting for depreciation so the gdp of any nation represent the sum total of gross value added without taking into account depreciation in all the sector of that economy during the said year after adjusting for tax and subsidies okay and i hope gva is clear to you now but what it is used for gva is used in estimation of gross domestic product gdp is a key indicator for the state of the whole economy there are three theoretical approaches which we use to estimate gdp first approach is production second approach is income approach and the third approach is expenditure when using the production or income approaches the contribution to the economy of each industry or sector is measured using gva and gva plus taxes on products minus subsidy on products that is equal to gdp i'm repeating it again sorry guys today i'm not having my digital pen and it is it was mal functioning so please bear it with i'm repeating the things again for you but just bear you, uh, i i advise you to uh, bring your own pen and pa paper so that you can understand the notion i'm trying to make you understand i'm repeating repeating it again gdp equals to gva that is gross value added plus taxes on products minus subsidy on products so having understood the meaning of gva let's now understand the share of public sector in gva as suggested in this chapter or as given in this chapter of economic survey the public sector here it is the equation which i told you earlier i just wrote it down please kindly note it for your further references now the share of public sector in gva 
the public sector constitutes about a fifth of Indian economy in terms of GVA at basic prices. The private corporate sector a little above one third and the household sector is the rest. That means to say one out of fifth is uh, you know public sector's contribution and private sector's contribution it is equals to one by three and the remaining pie is being contributed by the household sector. One conspicuous change over the four year period from 2011-12 to 2014-15 was a decline in the share of public and household sector in total GVA. This decline which was in the shares of public and household sector it was you know uh, uh, taken over by the private corporate sector. Let's see that uh, figures in the uh, table here. The public sector's contribution was 20.6 in 2011-12 and in 2014-15 uh, it was 19.4. Household sector for that matter was 45.5 and in 2014-15 it was 44.8. So that means in the period of these four years the contribution has been fallen to little percentage points but the share of private corp corporate sector for that matter it rose from 33.9 to 35.9 percent. Now there are four ways to look upon income of a economy although uh, they are uh, different from each other uh, in some way uh, like look here there are concept of GDP there is concept of net domestic product product NDP there is a, uh, a concept of uh, GNP and net national product so if we talk about concept of income they all are a form of national income but they are also different from each other. They all say a different story about the income of a nation in their own specific way. Here we will discuss them in a very objective way. First of all we will be taking up GDP. Gross domestic product is a value of all the final goods and services produced within the boundary of a nation during one year. So, need to say for India, uh, let us discuss the first uh, this uh, GDP, the calendar year for calculating GDP in India is the year from 1st April to 31st March which we call our financial year. So, it will be better to understand the terms used in this concept. The, in this concept, we are using terms like gross, we are using terms like domestic, we are using term product. Let us understand the term first gross. Gross means the same things to economics and commerce, that means total. Domestic means for that matter that all economic activities done inside the boundaries of the nation and by its own capital. Product. Product is the word to define goods and services together and final means where we are, we are using this word final, final means the stage of product after which there is no known chance of value addition in it. That means that product is ready to use finally and no further value can be added to this product. Now, Bringing forward the uh, concept of net domestic product NDP. NDP is the GDP calculated after adjusting the weight of value of depreciation. This is basically net form of GDP that is gross domestic product minus the total value of wear and tear which we call in a technical language depreciation. This depreciation happened in assets while the goods and services were being produced. Thus, accordingly, 
we want to calculate NDP net domestic product then that will be equal to GDP minus depreciation. Now coming further is GNP gross national product. Gross national product is the GDP of a country added with its income from abroad. Now here the transboundary economic activities of an economy are also taking, taken into account. The items which are counted in this uh, segment, uh, you call it income from abroad, which we gross national product. Mein add karte hai. First is trade balance. The net outcome at the year end of the total export and imports of a country may be positive or negative. Yani ki aapne saal bhar mein jo import or export kiya, to hum jab uh, export minus import karte hain, to ek value nikal kar aati hai. That is your trade balance. That may be negative. अगर आपके एक्सपोर्ट्स कम हैं और आपके इंपोर्ट्स ज़्यादा हैं दैट मे बी पॉजिटिव अगर आपके एक्सपोर्ट्स ज़्यादा हैं एंड यू गॉट लेस इंपोर्ट्स सो इन इंडिया केस द ट्रेड बैलेंस हैज ऑलवेज बीन नेगेटिव एक्सेप्ट एक्सेप्ट द थ्री कॉन्जिकेटिव ईयर्स बिटवीन टू थाउजेंड टू टू थाउजेंड थ्री वन इट वॉज पॉजिटिव ड्यू टू द हाई लेवल ऑफ सर्विस सेक्टर एक्सपोर्ट ड्यूरिंग द ईयर्स एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट बूमिंग बी पी ओ इंडस्ट्री एट दैट टाइम the second component of income from abroad which actually forms the part of gross national product the second component from uh, for income from ab uh, abroad is interest on external loans what is this the net outcome on the front of interest payments that means your balance of inflow and the outflow that means on the money which was lent out by the economy and minus the money the interest on money which was borrowed by the economy okay so this sum total gives you interest of external loans and in india's case it has always been negative as the economy has been a net borrower from the world economy the third component of income from abroad is private remittances the net outcome of the money which inflows and outflows on the accounts of private transfers what is this private transfers it is the transfers by indian nationals working outside india so from outside india they transfer it towards india in india and foreign nationals which who are working in india and they transfer it to their home countries तो जो पैसा भारतीयों ने विदेश से भारत में भेजा और जो पैसा बाहर के लोगों ने भारत में कमाते हुए अपने देश में भेजा इसके बैलेंस को हम काउंट करते हैं एंड दैट इज द प्राइवेट रेमिटेंस पार्ट ऑफ द इनकम फ्रॉम अब्रॉड वाला कंपोनेंट ऑफ क्रॉस नेशनल प्रोडक्ट एंड इफ वी टॉक अबाउट प्राइवेट रेमिटेंसेज and that front india has been always again till the early 1990s from the gulf region which fell down afterwards in the wake of heavy country bound movements of indian working there due to the gulf war and afterwards after the gulf countries migratory level the this trend further gain momentum due to the migration towards us and european countries after gnp next in line is nnp net national product net national product of an economy is the gnp after deducting the loss due to depreciation mind it it is almost same jaise ki humne gross domestic product mein se net domestic product nikalne ke liye usme se depreciation ko minus kar diya tha the operation to derive uh, it may be written like um, nnp equals to that is net national product equals to gnp minus depreciation or or nnp equals to gdp plus income from abroad minus depreciation the different uses of the concept nnp are um, like uh, this is the uh, income this is the national income of an economy though the gdp ndp and gnp all are national income 
they are not written with the capitalized M and I. Second, this is the purest form of income of a nation. And the third, when we divide NNP by the total population of a nation, we get the per capita income, that is ECI of that nation. A very basic point should be noted here that this is a point where the rates of depreciation followed by different nations makes a difference. Dekhi. For example, two countries ka jo NNP nikal kar aata hai, GNP nikal kar aata hai, wo, for example, that is 100. But rate of depreciation of country A is 10%. But rate of depreciation of country B is 20%. So for that example, agar hum isme se 10% minus kare of that 100, per, 100 GNP, to for country A because the depreciation rate was only 10%, so its NNP will be only 90. But the same NNP for country B, since its rate of depreciation depreciation is 20%. For this country B, the NNP will be 80, despite the fact that GNP was similar for both the countries, the actual difference was made by rate of depreciation and the difference in rate of depreciation for both the countries. Now, coming back to the statistics as provided in the economic survey, per capita GDP and per capita and and I that is national national income as net national income is given in uh, these uh, uh, table as you can see in 2015-16 per capita GDP was 6.2 and per capita NNI is all NNI was also 6.2 so per capita GDP was somewhere one lakh uh, and the per capita income was 93,000. 231. Per capita income defined as NNI divided by esti uh, estimated population is uh, that will give you this per capita NNI. Now, the saving investment balance. This is our next uh, topic in this chapter of economic survey. Broadly, there are three inst institutional sectors that save and invest. Kaun -kaun si institutions hai jo invest karte or save karte one is household private corporate sector these are both financial and non-financial and the public sector this public sector consists of uh, general government and uh, corporations so the gross domestic saving rate in the economy declined by 1.6 percentage points of GDP from 2011 to 2015. You can see it there in 2011-12 it was 34.6 uh, and the saving rate in 2014-15 is 33.0. This happened despite a 3.2 percentage point pickup in the private corporate saving rate. Here you can see the private corporate saving rate, it was 9.5 in 2011-12, but now it is 12.7 in 2014-15. Price monetary and management prices, the year 2015-16 continues to experience the moderation in general price levels in the country. The substantial decline in the price of Indian basket of uh, crude oil through its direct and uh, second round effects partly contributed to the decline in general inflation for second successive year. Hamare crude oil prices niche ja rahe hain. So, this helped to uh, you know control the infl inflation for second successive year. Further, the astute policies and management of inflation by the government through buffer stocking or by timely release of cereals or by import of pulses and moderate increase in minimum support price that is MSP of agricultural commodities, commodities helped in keeping prices of essential commodities under check during year 2015 and 16. Headline inflation. 
which is based on um, consumer price index uh, this actually cpi combined for rural and urban area series this cpi dipped to 4.9% during april to january 2015 16 as against 5.9% in 2015 14 15 last year cpi cpi for april to january was 5.9 but this year it is 4.9 almost one percentage point is less food inflation in terms of consumer food price index that is cfpi this cfpi declined to 4.8 percent during april to january in 2015-16 as compared to 6.4 percent in 2014-15 again in 2014-15 it was it was 6.4 but now it is 4.8 and cpi based core that is non food and non fuel inflation the big core uh, cpi is the basket which do not contains uh, your food items and fuel items so CPI based core inflation also remain uh, range bound that means it inches marginally upwards from 4.2 percent in March 2015 to 4.7 percent in January 2016. So that is rising a bit it was earlier 4.2 but now it is 4.7 without food and fuel basket CPI based inflation is actually rising by 0.5 percentage point and headline wholesale price index that is uh, WPI inflations decline during uh, following the global trend of declining the commodity and producer prices WPI inflation has remained in the negative territory since November 2014 and it was minus 2.8 8 percent in 2015-16 uh, that is uh, the period between April to January if we compare this to 2 percentage as it was uh, 2 percent in 2014 and 15 now let's talk about the banking sector the new initiatives in banking sector, uh, the performance of scheduled commercial banks during the current financial year remain subdued. The year on year that is YOY growth in bank credit remained below 10%. For the fortnight ended November 2015, the credit growth stood at 9.3%. And the sluggish growth of bank credit can be you can attribute why what are the reasons that it is a sluggish growth we are experiencing in banking sector. Why? First, because of incomplete transmission of the monetary policies as bank banks are uh, not uh, passing this entirely its benefit entirely to the borrowers. Second reason. The second reason is the unwillingness of banks to lend credit on account of rising non-performing assets (NPAs) that were altogether in new. Uh, in, uh, they were news in the whole year last year. The third reason for the sluggish growth in banking sector is worsening of corporate balance sheets, that force them to put their investment decisions on hold. Fourth cause is interest rate in the bond market being more attractive to the borrowers okay so there was a considerable increase in the opening of basic savings bank deposit accounts of during uh, year in view of government's initiative under the Pradhan Mantri Jangan Yojana for creating a universal social security system for all Indians, especially to the poor and the underprivileged, three schemes were launched in 2015 in the insurance and pension, pension sectors. The Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana, the Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana and the Atal Pension Yojana on 10 India basis on 9th May 2015. 
In pursuance of the announcement in the Union Budget 2015-16 of the setting up of the micro units development uh, refinance agency that is Mudra Bank to refinance the last mile financier, the Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana has been launched on 8 April 2015. Mudra seeks to offer two products, namely refinancing products with a loan requirement up to rupees 10 lakhs and support to the microfinance institution by way of refinance. In order to mobilize goal for productive uh, purpose and to reduce the country's reliance on import of gold, two main schemes were launched in uh, 2015. The first was sovereign gold balances, bond, um, sovereign gold bond scheme and second is gold monetizing scheme. Now coming to the balance of payment. Despite a decline in mercantile export during the first half of 2015-16, India's BOP position remained comfortable. Let's understand what this statement actually means. Some of the salient external sectors, in the scheduled development here is uh, external sector key. Uh, you can count first as lower trade deficit along with modest growth in invisibles so this this putting together this resulted in lower current account deficit that means there were a growth in invisibles and we got our trade deficits lower than the previous years so that together formed a lower current current account deficit and second was continued increase in foreign, di foreign direct investment in the country. Um, this was basically from inflows, FDI inflows and NRI deposits. Third is the main point which is worth noting is net outflow of portfolio man investment. Trade deficit on BOP basis declined from US dollar uh, 74.7 US dollars uh, in 2014-15 to 71.6 billion in 2015-16, April to September. That means uh, in 2015-16, the trade deficit stands at 71.6 billion. Whereas the same trade deficit was 74.7 US dollars, 74.7 billion US dollars. The next in the line uh, in this chapter is foreign exchange reserves. Uh, India's foreign exchange reserves stood at US dollar 351.5 billion as on 5th February 2016. This basket mainly comprised foreign currency assets amounting to almost US dollar uh, 328.4 billion and it was almost 93.4% of the total basket of 3 uh, 351.5 billion. Exchange rates. During 2015-16 that is from April to January the average exchange rate of the rupee depreciated to almost rupees 65.04 per US dollar as compared to rupees 60.92 per US dollar in 2014-15. That was again in the previous year during the tenure April to January. This, this depreciation in rupees, uh, this was mainly on the account of the fact that the dollar strengthened against all major currencies, not only against rupees actually against all major currencies in the world and again there was a, a stronger growth in the USA as well and the fact that China's growth and currency development uh, this year actually de deteriorated. So loss of China's currency and economy plus including growth in US ka apna wala market and uh, the strengthening of dollar against all major currencies were the three uh, factors which actually resulted in ultimate uh, rupees being depreciated against dollar. Now the next topic is external debts. As per the latest available data India's external debt 
stock increased by US dollar 8.0 premiums that is 1.7 percent to uh, US dollar uh, 483.2 billion at the end of September 2015 over and March 2015. Now, why this rise in external debt? The rise in external debt occurred on the account of long term debts, particularly commercial borrowings and NRI deposits. हमारे यहाँ कमर्शियल बोरइंग्स भी इंडिया ने ज़्यादा ली हैं इस बार एंड एन आर डिपॉजिट्स भी ज़्यादा हुए हैं हाउ एवर ऑन अ सीक्वेंशल बेसिस टोटल एक्सटर्नल डेट एट द एंड ऑफ 2015 थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन सेप्टर डिक्लाइन बाई यू एस डॉलर टू नाइन्टी वन फ्रॉम द एंड ऑफ जून टू लेवल जितना जून टू में जो था वो सितंबर में थोड़ा घटा है द मैचोरिटी पैटर्न ऑफ इंडियाज एक्सटर्नल डेट एज आई टोल यू अर्लियर कि हमारी जो एक्सटर्नल डेट बास्केट है उसमें मेनली वी गॉट लॉन्ग टर्म डेट्स सो अगर हम ये देखें कि कौन से लोन्स हमारे शॉर्ट टर्म में मैच्योर होने वाले हैं और कौन से हमारे लॉन्ग टर्म में मैच्योर होने वाले हैं तो मैचोरिटी पैटर्न शोज that we predominantly have long term borrowings in our basket at the end of september 2015 the long term debt accounted for almost 82.8 uh, 82.2 i'm sorry 82.2% of the india's total external debt and earlier it was uh, only 82 point uh, only 82% in uh, march 2015 so correspondingly the proportion of short term debt that declined so india's external debt has remained in safe limits within an with an external debt to gdp ratio of almost 23.7% and a debt service ratio of 7.5% in 2014-15 uh इंडिया का जो फॉरेन रिजर्व एक्सचेंज रिजर्व्स हैं दैट स्टैंड्स अराउंड थ्री डॉलर थ्री फिफ्टी वन पॉइंट फाइव बिलियंस दिस से इकोनॉमिक सर्विसेज दैट इंडिया फॉरेन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व्स प्रोवाइड अ कवर फॉर सेवेंटी टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल एक्सटर्नल डेट स्टॉक एट द इन एंड ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर टू थाउजेंड फिफ्टीन वेयर the same cover was only 71.9% at the march in the at the mar, uh, end of march 2015 so that is it for the current lecture uh, i'll uh, visit you again soon with the last part of this chapter economic survey ka volume 2 ka until then keep watching and uh, do visit our website that is decipheris.com Till then, goodbye and take good care of yourself and study hard. Bye bye.